So today we're looking at a terminal telegram client called TG. Now, as you can probably tell from the charts on the left hand side here, I'm not a very big telegram user. Basically what I use it for is posting to my notifications chat and that's pretty much it. So people who use Telegram more frequently can see all of my video notifications in one place. So I was thinking if I can get rid of the main Telegram client and just do all of that stuff in a much lighter way, that might be useful for me. So when you first run this application, you're not going to see this interface straight away. The first thing you need to do is input your phone number and then your Telegram code. And then it's going to go and connect to your Telegram account and do all of that magical stuff in the background. Once it's done that though, then you're gonna have this interface. So the movement keys in this work in a very similar way to Vi. So we can go into a chat by pressing L and we can go out of a chat by pressing H. I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff inside of a chat because one of my chats has messages that I'm too lazy to edit out. So it's easier just to show stuff in here. So we can go up and down with K and J. But unlike a lot of other applications that use Vi keys, we can also pass in a number as well. So we could do something like say 4J to go four lines down, or we could go 7K to go seven lines up. If we're inside of a chat and we want to go down to the bottom message, we can press capital G, but we can't press G or GG to go to the top message. That would be nice to see, but I guess it's just not there. While we're inside of the chat window though, if we do press G, it will go to the top However, capital G doesn't go to the bottom. I'm not really sure why that one doesn't work. And while we're inside of the message window, we can press the right square bracket to go to the next chat and the left square bracket to go to the previous chat. And moving away from the movement keys, if you press U on a user, that's gonna show you the information about it. In this case, the type is unknown, but let's go to one where I'm actually talking to the post bot. So if I press U on the post bot, as you're gonna see, this is a username here, this is the ID, tells you it's a bot, so on and so forth. And if you go and press C while you're in a chat, it's gonna tell you the information about the chat. So if you wanna go and join my group where I basically post notifications, that is the link to join it right there, but it's always linked down below as well. Now keep in mind that some of the keys do have different meanings depending on which window you actually use them in. So for example, if I go and press C inside of the chats window, it would show you my contacts. Now I don't actually have any contacts because I don't really use Telegram that much, but if I did, it would show you it inside of an FZF window. Now as for pressing U, what that's gonna do is mark a chat as read or unread. Now if there was actually a message in here that hadn't been read, it will show you a little number here that tells you how many messages still need to be read. Since we're on the chat windows anyway, if you go and press P, what that's going to do is pin one of your chats. So now that one has been moved to the top. So let's go and unpin it by pressing P again. And if you press M, that will then mute it. So if you don't want any notifications from that chat, that's how you do that. Now, one thing I haven't shown you how to do is how to actually send a message, which seems like a pretty important thing to do inside of a messaging application. So there's a couple of ways we can go about doing this. If we press I or A, that's going to then give us the ability to write a little message down here. So let's say this is a message and that will then go and send that. Now, sometimes you might wanna send a bit more than just what you can fit on one line. So in that case, you can press capital I or capital A, and that's going to then open up a Vim buffer. So let's say this is a longer message. And if we go and save and quit that, it will then go and send the message. Now, sadly, it doesn't interpret the new lines in the terminal client, but if we go over to the official client, as we can see, that message has actually been sent exactly the way that we wrote it. And if you're doing more than just talking to a bot like I do, you probably want to also be able to reply to a message. So the way that we do that is go and select the message we want to reply to. So let's say this one right here, we press lowercase r, and it's gonna prompt us for another message the same way it did before. So let's say this is a reply. And as we're gonna see, it shows the message we're replying to right here, and then it shows our reply under it. So if we go over to the official client now, as you can see, that has been interpreted properly. Now, once again, if we want to go and send a longer reply, what we do is we press capital R on the message, and then basically this is another reply, and go and save that. And as you're gonna see, the reply has been sent exactly as we'd expect. Now, let's say that we realize we didn't actually want to send these messages. So what we can do is we can go and select the message and then press DD on it. Now, keep in mind that when you do this, it doesn't give you a confirmation prompt. So make sure you're 100% sure about what you want to delete. But sometimes you might want to go and delete multiple things at once. So the way that we do that is we press space on a message and that actually goes and 
selects it and lets us go and select another message. So let's say we also want to go and delete this message right here. So now what we can do is we can press DD and that's going to go and delete both of them. But we don't just have to delete a message. So let's go over to another chat. Let's say this one right here. And let's say that we want to forward this message right here. So if I go and press Y on that, it's going to go and copy the message. And let's go back to the previous chat and now press P. And now that message has been forwarded. So let's go over to the GUI version. And as we can see, forwarded from this chat right here. But when we copy it with Y, it doesn't just do it in the internal buffer. It also adds it to our clipboard. So if we go over to say my terminal here and I try to paste this, as we can see, that message that we just copied was also added to the clipboard. And we can also forward multiple messages at once as well. And this makes use of a couple of things we've gone over already. So if we want to select two messages, we press space and space. Let's go press Y, that will then copy them and go back to the previous chat. If we press P, both of them will then be forwarded. Now, sometimes you might accidentally select a bunch of things you didn't really mean to select. Now, obviously you can go and deselect them by pressing space on them, but the other way to do so is by pressing control and then left square bracket, and that will then deselect everything you've already selected. Now, rather than relying on anything custom to do the message opening, it actually relies on your mail cap file. So if you're using a terminal email client, you've probably already got that configured. So something like say MUT or NeoMUT, but I'm not actually using a terminal email client. So basically it's gonna treat everything as something that needs to go into my editor. So if I go and open up this message right here, as we're gonna see, it sticks it inside of NeoVim, which for the most part is gonna be perfectly fine. But if I have say an audio, video or picture file, I probably wanna go and configure that to make sure that the right thing is opening it up. Now, speaking of those, if you actually want to go and send one of those files, if you press SA, that will let you send audio. SD will send a document. SN will send an animation. I'm guessing that refers to a GIF. SP is for sending a picture. And then SV is for sending a video. But the way it works is a tad bit annoying. So if I press, say, uh, SP, as you're going to see, it just prompts us down here. And we don't actually get any tab completion. So it's really annoying to select what you actually want to send. I'd recommend just not really doing this. I guess you can go and get the path to the file from your terminal, but trying to write it out in here is a little bit annoying to do. If you don't feel like setting up your mail cap file, there is a couple of things you can do. So if a message just contains a URL, if you go and press O on that, it's gonna go and open it up inside of your web browser. So as we can see, that opened up that video as we'd expect. The other thing that we can do is we can go and press the exclamation mark and then specify what application to actually open up that message with. So let's say that we want to open up this one here and let's say we want to open it up with less. So we also have to pass in percent and then S because that refers to the message that we're looking at. So as we can see, that opened up in less. Now, if you press NG while you're inside of the chat window, it's going to let you create a new group. But as I mentioned, I don't actually have any contacts. And likewise, if you press NS, that will let you create a new secret group. Now, one thing that is really nice about this application is the help menu is actually context dependent. So if we're inside of the chat window and we press question mark, it will only show the keys for the chat window. And if we're inside of the message window, it will only show the keys for the message window. So I think I mentioned configuration earlier and the way that it works is actually really simple. So the absolute basic configuration is this right here. So phone equals and then whatever your phone number is in the international format. So being in Australia, my number starts with plus six one. Go find out what it is for any other country though. So the rest of the configuration though, it's done in a weird way. I haven't seen many other applications do this. It's literally just a Python script. So if you want to store your phone number but not have it stored in a plain text file, you can go and store it in something like pass and then load that in from the database. So by default, it's actually configured to work with macOS and it uses Terminal Notifier to integrate into the macOS notification system. So if you want to have notifications while you're running this application, you'd want to switch this out to be something like say, Notify Send or any of the other Notify Send clones. Also, I didn't mention this earlier, but you can actually go and record a voice message through FFmpeg. I don't really think there's any reason to do it through the application, but if you want to do so, then there is a key to do it. That is on, I think, V? Yeah, you press V, it will let you record a message. I haven't actually gone and configured that, so by default for me, it's not actually going to work because 
it's going to try to work through ulcer and I'm using pulse audio and it just doesn't play nicely. You can also configure the symbols being used in the chat window. So if you want to say use emoji or nerd symbols and things like that, this is how you'd go and configure that. So chat and the message flags as well. Now, one thing I want to mention is if you actually do want to send files in this application, you don't just have to use that command line version that I showed you before. If you have a terminal file manager that supports a file picker mode, you can also use that in here as well by setting the file underscore picker underscore command option. But I don't have NNN or Ranger installed and I don't believe that LF actually has a file picker mode. But if you are using one of those, those options are there as well. Now, what about the one big reason why I wanted to use this? So if we go over to the GUI client here, as you can see on my bot window, I have these buttons here that say create post, schedule post, things like that. So normally what I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll say create post, create it for this one here. And then I can do things like say this is a message and I can say I want to have comments on this. I want to have reactions, things like that. Now, all of these buttons down the bottom here, I can interact with from the terminal client. The ones that I can't interact with though are any of them in here because this is a part of the bot keyboard and right now the bot keyboard isn't actually supported so for me I can't actually use this but if you're just a regular telegram user it's probably going to be just fine honestly I think this is actually a really good application and for the most part there's no reason why you can't actually use this. There is one problem I did notice about this so if I go and press BP it's going to take us into what seems like a debugging mode of some sort. I'm not really sure what this is, and I'm not really sure how to get out of it either. If I go and press quit, give it a second to go, it's going to take us back to the application. At least it should. Yeah, okay. It does. But I don't really know what I can actually do from here. I don't know how to get out of this. If I press quit again, does that take us back? No, that actually just quits out of the application. So that probably shouldn't be there. And that's probably just there because I've got the absolute latest version on the master branch. Speaking of that, if you want to go and install this, it's available on the AUR as a binary release or as I said, as the master version. And I'm running the master version right now, so there may be some hiccups that exist in this version which don't exist in the latest binary version. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. As I said, I feel like this is a pretty decent Telegram client. If I used it a bit more frequently and I wasn't relying on bot keyboards, I probably would use something like this, but for now, I'm going to have to stick with the GUI client and just say that for regular users, this is probably going to be a pretty decent application. So before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andre, Nathan, Montezai, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Peter, the Road, Tony, Brennan, John, Marek, Mikel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilver. If you want to go and support my work, links down below to my Subscribestar, Patreon, LibrePay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and Library and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.